Hey everybody, what's going on? It is once again World Building with DM Dave. I'm your host, DM Dave. Welcome to our sixth episode of World Building with DM Dave. Uh, today we are going to tackle the wonderful world of numbering our maps in Roll20. Uh, if you've been following the series so far, I picked a map from Dyson Logos' um, Megadelf series <clears throat> from his blog. Uh, we have retraced it in Dungeon Draft and did a little bit of editing in Photoshop, and then we uploaded it to Roll20 and drew the dynamic lighting. So you could see here on my screen, we've got uh, the two maps that I created uh, from the single map. So we got the upper level and the lower level. It's pretty nifty. Um, and we've done all the dynamic lighting, which you could see. So now we just need to do numbers. Uh, numbers are, it, it, there's kind of a, a science to doing numbers and uh, uh, kind of an old school way of doing it from the beginning. So I'm gonna show you kind of that method in doing it. So I'm gonna go to my Morlock retreat. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> but we're gonna go here to our Morlock retreat uh, upper map. I wanna go to our entrance. So this is the main entrance and you can see it's pretty well lit because our light source, pretty much the only light source I'm gonna have in here for now is right there. And this is using Roll20's brand new dynamic lighting system, which looks pretty nifty. I really love the gradients that they put in there. Um, I'm gonna go into my library. Now, if I didn't have a bunch of numbers, I'd have to create some individually. I'm probably gonna package this up and offer a link for people who want to um, download them and I'll put it on my Patreon for you. Otherwise, you're going to have to create your own using Photoshop or buy some in Roll20's Marketplace. Uh, I've already got pretty much all my numbers here. You can see in my number tokens bag right here. And I've got, oh, hundreds <laughs> with lots of different variants. But um, we're going to open up my number ones here. I'm going to go to my GM info overlay. And then I'm gonna start dragging and dropping the numbers over. So there's gonna be my room number one. So that's gonna be the entrance to our Morlock Caves. From there, it's just a matter of numbering them. And the best way to do it is to place them in a way that makes sense with how your um, players are gonna be going through the dungeon. Typically, you want to follow the left wall. It's kind of an old school way of dungeon crawling so that you don't miss anything. So if we entered through this ladder here, our left wall would be going around this way. And then you could see we're gonna dead end in this area here too. But it's probably worth writing something about or having something interesting here. So let's go ahead and make this number two. Okay, we're gonna keep following this wall. You could see the path diverges here and then re comes back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep following this wall. Let's name this long stretch of hallway, uh, we'll call this number three. In fact, and you don't always have to name hallways. So when you're writing and creating an adventure, um, you're generally gonna have something called general features, which is going to describe the overall features of the whole place. And the rule is if there is nothing in area that is really that different from the general features, you don't really have to create an individual room. So that's why in a lot of times in modules you see in maps that they don't number their uh, long stretches of hallway. All right, so we put a three there. There's kind of this cool little alcove here. So let's go ahead and make that a number four. Maybe we have, could have something hiding there. Uh, remember, this is a secret door here. So if we look back at our diamond, dynamic lighting, we got a secret door. Let's go ahead and make sure we remember reminding ourselves of that. I've also got a secret door. I've got a lot of secret stuff, but I got a secret door token that I'm going to put down also on my GM layer so only I could see it. We're going to put this here so we remember it's there. Uh, probably want to have some notes about it too. So let's go ahead and make that. Um, we'll make this area number five. You can see too that my number tokens also have uh, letters in case there's any sorts of variants that I need to track. All right, so so far, let's go back and look from the beginning here. We've gone one to two, uh, three, four, and five. Uh, ends up coming back around to this longer stretch of hallway. Let's go ahead and number that six, okay? Uh, we'll keep going down. 
this is a kind of a wide area here. Looks like a could be a good place for combat. We'll call that seven. Um, and then these two man-made rooms we'll call eight, and we'll call this one. Uh, call this nine. Whoops. And I think that looks pretty good. This goes off the map here, so we'll probably want a different label there uh, at some point. But I think we've got most of our stuff. Remember, this is not set in stone. We can always go back and adjust it as needed. But I think for our sort of basic numbering, we've got what we need. All right, and this goes all the way down to number nine. Let us go back to the next level. So what I'm gonna do with this is because this is a, a new level, so to speak, I'm gonna just start back over from one. So we'll just go right back up to one, and I'll show you again kind of the uh, the follow the uh, left wall method. So we're following this left wall. This goes down some dead ends, but comes back up. Let's say, uh, you know, this is kind of a cool area here. We'll call this number two. Uh, uh, the hallway, let's not give it a name. We'll just we'll just leave that as it is, and the doors will be covered under general features, so we only have to do that. And I'm not going to make it locked or anything, but following the left wall, we're going to hit these uh, kind of closet-looking things first. So we'll call this three. Um, this will be four. Then you're going to go into this area here, which would be uh, five. We'll call this room six. Call this room number seven. Like I said, we're just pretty much going in a circle around. Eight. Uh, what else we got here? This guy, nine. Remember, this goes up into, we'll just leave that as it is because that this curved hallway is featured in the um, upper level. Uh, we're gonna do 10. And last but not least, number 11. All right, there's no secret doors with this one, so we don't have to do that. I don't have any kind of traps or anything I want yet, but you would also want to put those on, so we might do that in a later video. But that's pretty much it. That's how you number. Just essentially start from the most logical place that the... Ah, uh, you know what? Look at this big room right here. How could I neglect it? Let's, uh, we're going to shift everything over real quick. So like I said, nothing's set in stone. We just want to kind of do it so when I go to start writing this, um, even if it's going to be kind of a um, non-professional just for my own benefit, you want to make it so that it's pretty easy to read. So the most, the ways they're most likely to go are, is going to be the order you're going to read in. Now, granted, they can go any way they want, so they could immediately jump from here to room 11 if they wanted, but this is just kind of like a a nice clean way to get it done and the way that's more or less been done with um, role-playing publications for you know the 40 some years that role-playing games have been a, a thing but that's it uh, we've got our two rooms numbered up now we've followed the left wall all the way through I've shown you also how to modify stuff we put in a secret door it's really that simple boom 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 the only other things I would do is probably put some kind of like label here that told me what kind of room it is um, especially if this was going to be a production professional roll 20 product but uh, we've more or less got everything we need uh, in our next video we are going to actually start planning out our two maps what are inside each of these levels and uh, work to start doing some early balancing and encountering. All right, so we'll see you on that one. In the meantime, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and as always, thank you so much.